In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the standard gradient and divergence in spherical coordinates from covariant derivatives. Covariant derivatives of the standard type, so what shows up in general relativity and uh, the usual mathematics of curved manifolds, is in what's called the covariant basis. Most of tensor calculus is in the covariant basis, and the covariant basis is defined in the following way, where the dot product of the basis vectors just gives the metric. However, in situations where the metric is diagonal, then it's convenient to change the basis to one that is so-called orthonormal, which is sort of a modified version of the covariant basis, where the orthonormal basis vectors dot to yield the identity matrix instead of the metric of the manifold, like in the covariant basis case. During the video, there was a spelling error in the beginning here, specifically right here. I had tetra written instead of tetrad. It was missing the D. So if you're wondering what a tetra is, well, as far as I'm aware, it's not anything. I meant tetrad. So this is the sentence with the error fixed. Now for the case of a diagonal metric, it's easy to see how to relate the orthonormal basis vectors with the covariant basis vectors. You simply have that factor out front. The most common situation where you have a diagonal metric is in standard vector calculus. In standard vector calculus, you're working in flat space, and you're almost always working in an orthogonal coordinate system. And in that situation, all of those situations that meet those criteria, the metric is diagonal, and an orthonormal basis is easy to define. It turns out that as a result of this being the case, the standard gradient and the standard divergence typically is defined using this orthonormal basis, and therefore it looks different from the divergence and gradient yielded directly by the ordinary covariant derivative. But if you make the proper change of basis from the covariant basis to the orthonormal basis, then all the expressions work out right, and the covariant derivative gives you exactly what you're used to seeing. So with this definition of the orthonormal basis in terms of the ordinary basis, we can write out the definition of the vector in terms of its covariant basis components, and then perform the change of basis on it and get this new vector or set of vector components, which is the same vector but in the orthonormal basis in terms of the old one and the covariant basis where we just have that extra root GII factor in front to give the change of basis or rather as a result of the change of basis. So let's start with the gradient in the covariant basis which is here. So we've got a covariant derivative on the scalar which just reduces to a partial derivative because it's a scalar and then we have the index raised because the standard gradient refers to the contravariant components in the orthonormal basis. So these are the contravariant components in the covariant basis. So we perform a change of basis and hey look we get the components in the orthonormal basis which is what the standard gradient is. So then with the divergence we don't have basis vectors to deal with but the vector whose divergence we're taking does need to be changed. We need to change the basis on that and we saw that the relationship is given up here. So this divergence itself is just the covariant derivative of the vector in the covariant basis. But of course the standard vector calculus is in this situation where the orthonormal basis is advantageous so uh, we want this same quantity expressed in terms of this vector in the orthonormal basis instead of the covariant basis. So we make the natural change by adding this factor in the denominator to compensate for the one that shows up, whoops, sorry, the one that shows up in the numerator there so that we have it expressed in terms of the orthonormalized components of that vector, so in the orthonormal basis. Now in the Laplacian, when we perform that same change of basis, it turns out it doesn't change anything. So both in the orthonormal basis and in the covariant basis, the Laplacian looks exactly the same, which is kind of interesting. 
So basically you can see this by taking the divergent expressed in the orthonormal basis and then insert the orthonormal components of the vector as the orthonormal gradient components. So you just take those components to be the orthonormal gradient components, you stick them in and they cancel and you see we just get the Laplacian um, that we would have gotten had we not changed into the orthonormal basis in the first place and just stayed in the covariant basis. Because the contributions that we get when we make the change to the orthonormal basis just cancel out. So then if we take the contravariant metric to be this, so flat space and spherical coordinates, an orthogonal coordinate system without any curvature present, then we can work out what the gradient is first. So uh, we find that if we did not take the change in the basis vectors, when we change basis into account, we would just get the partial derivatives contracted with the contravariant metric there. So we'd get factors of 1 over r squared and 1 over r squared sine squared theta here, which is not the standard gradient. And if we used covariant components, then it would just be the partial derivatives even farther from it. But if we use the contravariant components and take into account the transformation of the basis vectors, then we get an extra factor of r, which brings this to just 1 over r, and an extra factor of r sine theta here, which just brings this to r sine theta in the denominator there. So then we end up with the standard gradient, the standard contravariant gradient in the orthonormal basis works out perfectly. Now if we take the divergence without accounting for uh, the change of basis, then we're missing some factors here too. But if we remember the change of basis and uh, insert that factor in the denominator there, so we're getting the divergence in the orthonormal basis instead of the covariant basis, then all the normal factors you'd expect come into play. So that is how you calculate the standard gradient and divergence in spherical coordinates using covariant derivatives. In fact, you can do this for any, any diagonal metric, the most usefully for any uh, flat metric in an orthogonal coordinate system. You just have to pick the metric for that coordinate system, or rather you have to express the flat metric in that coordinate system, and then you can plug and chug and you'll get the standard values that you can look up on Wikipedia for the uh, gradient and divergence in that coordinate system. D-trick out.